2503 and this is a short summary introduction to the topics that we'll be covering in uh, the 20th lecture for our uh, uh, for community media production. So I'm reading from the notes and it's still not making sense but there we go. Um, what we're going to cover this session is the idea of community cohesion and what that means in terms of um, kind of what we're, what we're aiming for. We've been talking a lot about community development, we've been talking a lot about social issues, we've been talking about things like inequality, uh, ethnic differences. We kind of really kind of put out a framework of challenges that um, the you know we need to address if we're gonna uh, move into a more, I suppose, a socially equitable uh, set of arrangements. So what I wanna cover in this session is come at some of the issues, if you like, that are due to um, a kind of sense of uh, engagement in communities. And what I want to do is use some music uh, to underpin this uh, and to draw on uh, some of my own personal recollections of what it was like growing up in Liverpool in the 1970s and 80s and the kind of challenges that deindustrialization uh, presented uh, to whole, you know, as workforces changed and mass unemployment uh, and poverty was kind of embedded in that, in that city and in a sense what kind of we can achieve with you know what, what does this bring about in terms of a sense of social identity and it might, might be a negative form of social identity rather than a positive form of identity but it's still a sense of identity so what we're going to look at is you know let's start off with a kind of sense of what community is and there's a, you know these are the kind of things that are depicted on television often as a kind of very nostalgic view you know kind of 1950s uh, back streets leaving your doors open the neighbors popping in and out those kind of things or village life where everything's regarded as being if you like you know kind of uh, everybody knows each other and everybody's supportive uh, but in reality that can be a tyranny as much as it can be a support mechanism um, so we kind of really need to think this through in terms of I suppose one thing we need to look to is historical accounts of community. If we want to find out and identify what community is, then we need to seek out and understand what people have said and written about and experienced as community in different periods. Uh, sorry, it's just a speck on my screen suggesting, I don't know, I thought there was something on, on my nose, but there isn't. There you go. I've drawn attention to it now and I can't stop looking at it. There you go. I shouldn't do these. Um, so what is, you know, we, we, we often have a nostalgic view about community. What do we mean by community in a modern setting? And kind of what, you know, what are the key indicators to what that level, you know, what we identify as community is? Because, you know, we, we face, again, significant challenges in terms of what um, is the downside for social, urban, community life, rises in un unemployment, crime, uh, you know, kind of alcohol abuse, you know, kind of a, a society that's focused on uh, the, the lowest common denominator, pound shops, betting shops, nail bars, you know, these things, you know, kind of fast food, you know, does the, any of this help to promote a sense of community or is it something that we need to, and these arguments have always gone on, you know, the kind of the Victorians were very, um, you know, uh, rigorous about their approach, their, 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 um, the word I'm looking for, their, their uh, moral approach to uh, pauperism, for example, is that the, the deserving and the undeserving poor. And that's a refrain that we've seen in modern politics for, for the last few years, uh, which kind of s tries to divide people who are don't do well out of the system and kind of blame those people that it's their fault. Uh, so we want to look at this in terms of you know, how, what, what does this mean in terms of social practice and how do we understand the terms of what relative deprivation is and what you know the, these terms mean in practice rather than just as a kind of theoretical construct which is put forward by politicians to suit their purposes you know what's the evidence that underpins uh, the definitions and the, and the calculation of an idea of poverty uh, so what this is based on is a kind of sense of there are certain foundational assumptions that you know kind of there's a kind of that there's a culture of poverty that there's a cycle of decline and that these problems get compounded as you know and it's it's rather than thinking about this as an investment led issue people see it as a personal and moral issue which further compounds the downward spiral because once you feel as if you can't 
achieve anything in a society or make a contribution to a society, then it reinforces a negative spiral of decli decline. And politicians of all colours and all parties have sought to arrest this kind of moral uh, view of uh, 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 you know, decline by promoting meritocracy without necessarily addressing the structural factors that enforce and embed economic inequality. So government responses have been, you know, largely focused on, if you like, regeneration and kind of the idea of kind of multi-agency regeneration where you've been, you know, so it's almost seen as a kind of a bureaucratic process. You just need to get all the different agencies communicating and working together and then thereby you'll address social exclusion and poverty. Uh, but fundamentally underpinning a lot of the changes that are taking place in the UK is a dismantling of the welfare state and where people's reliance so you're more likely to prescribe to individual solutions uh, rather than a social or a community solution uh, and community solutions are often something that kind of are pushed aside but there is a growing interest in the type of community solutions the, which emerge from grassroots uh, community groups and which demonstrate there are other ways to uh, engage with some of these issues and to reduce levels of inequality, poor health, uh, so poor, poor levels of social engagement with some quite simple techniques which embed a sense of belonging within a particular locality or a particular community. And it's this idea of kind of, you know, the... the, the the slogan of politicians on many sides is kind of take back control. Well, what does that mean in practice? And we're still, you know, there's plenty of evidence of, and community media should be at the vanguard of this uh, uh, movement to take back control, but it's often excluded from the debates and discussions. And it, it does, does it count, does community media carry the debate and the discussion in these ways? So, you know, if we want communities working for themselves, uh, the, we need to pursue and look at different alternative models to this. So things like time banking, things like open education and learning systems, uh, things like uh, networks that manage a transition between different, you know, kind of work life and home life and having places where you can go and be, you know, kind of play and engage with other people. And, you know, kind of there's things like there's uh, the, the UK men's sheds, the UK sheds, men in sheds. Uh, the Sunday Assembly, which is an alternative practice to religious faith-based practice in churches. And they're also thinking about, you know, kind of fun places, places where people can congregate. And I think some of the changes in our urban design are finally starting to be recognised in the UK that city spaces should be designed for people to do a range of things and a range of people there, not just for cars and not just for consumers of alcohol. Uh, but, you know, there, there should be a, 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 an approach which sees people as uh, an integrated set of experiences and activities. And this kind of leads us to a model in terms of where we're thinking about what do we need to understand and to promote and to support and to research and investigate and invest in that will help us to build a stronger sense of community? What are the actions that we need to look for? And what are the bridges? How can we build those bridges to make those actions and those communities work in practice? So the notes for this are up on the DMU Commons wiki. Just go to wiki.our.dmu.ac.uk. And if you want to carry on the conversation and share examples or you know, kind of pass any comments or start a debate and discussion, that's what we want. Go to the DMU Talk portal, which is talk.our.dmu.ac.uk. Uh, and log in using the LDAP function, um, the button, and that'll get you in with your P number. So I'll see you at the lecture.